Welcome to another episode of Black Knights Weekly here on GoArmySports.com. This time coming to you from inside Gillis Fieldhouse, I'm Rick Johnston. This week on the show, we'll have a special one-on-one -on -one conversation with volleyball head coach Alma Kavachi. We'll take a look at the interesting relationship between the seniors and the freshmen on the Army men's soccer team. And we'll have a special chat with senior captain from the football team, Steve Erzinger. But before we get to all that, let's take a look back at the week that was in Army athletics. On Friday afternoon, the cross-country teams opened up their season with the Army Open 5K. On the men's side, the Black Knights took 12 of the top 14 finishers, paced by senior Mike Mitchell. Barrett Lahardy would finish just behind his classmate. The women's team had 10 of the top 11 finishers, with senior Chelsea Prawl recording the fastest time. The men's soccer team was also in action on Friday when they took on VMI. In the 79th minute, freshman Kyle Golonski gave the Black Knights the 1-0 win with his first career goal. Freshman goalie John Marinelli recorded his second straight shutout. It was a much different scene back at West Point on Monday night as Russell Payne's team took on Seton Hall. Rain poured down on Clinton Field for the entire match as the Pirates pulled out the 1-0 win. Over the weekend, the women's soccer team hosted the 2011 Black Knight Classic. Kim Ahn would be named tournament MVP after pacing the Army attack. The sophomore scored the game winner in a 1-0 win over Seton Hall on Friday and followed that up with two goals and an assist in Sunday's win over Stetson. The volleyball team headed out to California to take part in the Community Bankers Classic. The Black Knights defeated Duquesne and dropped matches to Pacific and Mississippi State. Senior Rachel Willis was named to the all-tournament team after recording 29 kills over the weekend. Saturday night saw the Army football team return to the field as they hit the road to take on Northern Illinois. The Black Knights racked up 409 yards of total offense, but the Huskies came out on top, winning 49-26. Senior linebacker Steve Erzinger made a career-high 21 tackles in the game. And the Army golf team played in their first event of the season at the inaugural Battle of the Tetons. Sophomore Anthony Kim fired a hole-in-one on his way to a 5-under final round, hoping the Black Knights to a 6th place finish. Kim finished in a tie for 4th, his 7th career top 10. After this short break, Rich DeMarco will go one-on-one -on -one with volleyball head coach Alma Kavachi. That's coming up after this short break. Army football tickets are on sale now. Don't miss a minute of the day-long excitement at West Point's historic Mikey Stadium, the greatest place to watch college football. Come out on Saturday, September 17th. The Black Knights take on Northwestern. Kickoff is at 3.30. The first 5,000 fans will receive a limited edition print of Army's 2011 Hall of Fame class. Call the Army ticket office at 877-TIX-ARMY or go online at GoArmySports.com. Army football. It's more than just a game at West Point. Rich DeMarco back on Black Knights Weekly. In five years, Army volleyball coach Alma Cavacci has taken the Black Knights to the top of the conference standings and among the best teams in the league year in, year out. It's time now to go one-on-one -on -one with the head coach of Army volleyball, Alma Cavacci. Alma, thanks for a few minutes here on Black Knights Weekly. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So, start of a new year. Your team's come out of the gates. Big weekend coming up with the West Point Challenge. How do you feel about this? 2011 edition of Army Volleyball. Oh, we as a coaching staff are extremely excited about the team that we have this year, their commitment and how dynamic we are. This past weekend in California, we had a great showing. We were able to beat uh, uh, Duquesne, which was ranked third in the third last year in the conference, in the A-10 conference, and they were originally ranked team. And that match took like two and a half hours. It was decided by two or three points, and we won it in five. So that was very good. And we had a great showing against Pacific and Mississippi State. Again, bigger conferences. But uh, we're very excited about what we have this year and this weekend coming up it's another um, great challenge for us having Arkansas here and uh, SEC team top of the SEC and also having Dartmouth here an Ivy League team that we always compete and also Marist uh, our neighbor and NJI team this tournament so we're looking forward to getting better each day. Five years as head coach Alma and taking a program that was very competitive in the Patriot League to the top of the league how challenging has it been going from one of the better teams in the league to a conference champion and now being one of the league's favorites year in year out. Um, it's challenging but it's a lot of fun and as a coaching staff and as a coach you look for the competitive the competitiveness of it so I think we've done a very good job recruiting 
and um, also the determination in practice when you see this, uh, the team compete every day and be focused. So it's been very good. Of course, uh, the league is actually getting better, but uh, very, very excited where we are. Again, we're going to focus on the, we're focusing on the process each day and not really look at the bigger picture yet. And I think if we continue to focus on the process, we will become better. So excited about that. Alma, four years as an assistant coach to Glenn Conley before becoming head coach here at West Point. How did that prepare you as a coach and also learning about West Point, the ins and outs? How have those four years had an impact on you, Alma Kavachi, the head coach? Oh, huge impact, and uh, I feel I'm honored to actually to be able to have the assistant coaching position here at West Point. Um, and also, Glenn Conley was an incredible mentor to me, and Colonel Jeb has been amazing, our head officer representative, to be able to prepare uh, uh, not only for the volleyball, but also for uh, West Point, what West Point uh, does here and what, what the cadets do every day. So those four years uh, were definitely, the first year was definitely a challenge coming from uh, focusing so much in volleyball, but that really here at West Point, it's not it. We're focused on the mission of cadet athletes first, and uh, being able to fit practices was always a challenge in the beginning to be able to maximize time and increase efficiency with uh, the few hours that you got. And I think those four years under Glenn Conley prepared me to be able to take the team uh, forward, and it has been uh, those four years have helped me a lot here at West Point. And it was natural uh, when this head coaching position opened up to be able to take it. Um, I am uh, committed to this program. I love what uh, I love the mission and I love teaching our uh, our cadets uh, volleyball and also lessons in life but uh, I love that they do it because they're extremely passionate about volleyball and not just the scholarship piece of it so that's always amazing to me and that's why I'm here. Alma, quite a journey for you from the Albanian national team to Temple University, a highly successful career there, to an assistant coach and now a head coach. Yes, um, it has been, I'm, I'm honored, I'm humbled. Uh, it has been a blessing to be able to have the opportunity from Albania uh, to come to the States. And again, my assistant coach at Temple, Gilad, that now is uh, Gilad Jaron, that is now the head coach at University of San Francisco. Also, Bob Bertucci, that was my coach at Temple and now is the head coach at Lehigh. Uh, uh, they, they helped me a lot throughout my, uh, my first years at Temple. It was definitely a challenge coming into the States with culture and language. Had a great team. But the love for volleyball was always there. So those three hours of practice each day, to me, it was a release uh, from from the outside world, and and um, I loved it. It was challenging, but uh, definitely a blessing. Well, Alma, we want to thank you for spending a few minutes with us here on Black Knights Weekly, and quite a career for you so far, and still a long time to go. And of course, here at West Point, the 2011 season just underway. Best of luck this weekend. Thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. That's Army Volleyball head coach Alma Kavachi. We'll be back with more Black Knights Weekly coming up in just a moment. Hello, I'm Scott Swanson with your Surgex Strength Training Tip of the Week. There are six areas of your training program that you need to focus on. One, muscular strength, lift hard. Two, speed, agility, quickness, run fast. Three, cardiovascular fitness. Four, flexibility, train a full range of motion. Five, your rest and recovery, get your sleep. And six, nutrition, protein, eat lean meats, fish, chicken, carbohydrates, Eat your vegetables, fruit, and whole grains, and eat your fat. Too much emphasis in any one area of your training will leave you deficient in other areas. Last week, we had a special conversation with men's soccer head coach Russell Payne. This week, we take a look at the senior leadership from senior co-captains Tanner Robertson and Jeff Pickett. This season, the men's soccer team has seen the bulk of their starting lineup filled by freshmen. Those youngsters continue to mature thanks to senior co-captains Tanner Robertson and Jeff Pickett. Robertson understands the significance he and the other seniors have on this freshman class. The majority of their upperclassmen relationships is on the team. I think that's an important thing. And we, we made it a point as seniors, not just Jeff and I, but as seniors and juniors, you know, because there's a lot of leaders on the team. It's not just Jeff and I. Um, we really made a point to bring them in and make them feel comfortable. Pickett's leadership task is unique. With three freshmen joining him in the defensive half and a freshman goalie, all eyes are on the Texan. But the defender says his leadership has evolved the most away from soccer. On the field, I'm really just kind of 
teaching them a lot about like where I'm going to be, where they need to be. But off the field has really been more of the development for me. Like instead of worrying about myself and my game now, I'm worrying about more of what where people need to be and just a lot of just worrying about other people right now. That new face and goal is John Marinelli. He says Pickett has helped him make a smooth transition to soccer on the D1 level. It's awesome. I mean, you don't really have to tell him what to do at all. I mean, it makes my job a lot easier when you have a defender like that in front of you. So it's great. I mean, his leadership skills are really good. <clears throat> Defensively, he's rock solid. Whether it has been questions about school, what time practice is, or what to wear to class, these seniors have come through in every way. And Pickett has keyed in on one approach to help his younger teammates out. I think a lot of it is that if you talk to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis instead of like in a big group, I think that helps a lot more. Like people aren't going to be that prone to asking questions in a big group, but if you go up to talk to someone like, hey, how was that chemistry test or whatever, then they will be more open to opening up to you and then asking you questions. So I've just been trying to, you know, reach out to each one individually. But boys will be boys, and the seniors do their best to look out for the freshmen, just like a scene that played out earlier this year. The freshmen didn't know what to wear, right, because they didn't have their ads for class put together yet. And uh, so the cows pulled some shenanigans on them, told them that for the first day it was all right for them to wear their uh, warm-ups. Kind of funny little gig. And then uh, we tried to snuff it out before the first day, before formation. But... Uh, we didn't quite get to all of them, and two of them showed up in their warm-ups to, to breakfast formation, so that was pretty funny. Robertson says he wishes he was as on top of everything like these freshmen are back when he was new to West Point. With the Army men's soccer team, Rick Johnston, Black Knights Weekly. Army fans, there's no better place to be before a West Point football game than Black Knights Alley. Open three hours before kickoff, come out and avoid the traffic crunch. Black Knight's Alley features fun for the whole family. From the Black Knight walk, to face painting and autographs with Army athletics teams and mascots, to live music, food and beverages, inflatable games, interactive displays, and the live broadcast of the Army football tailgate show. There literally is something for everyone. So make a day of it, that's Black Knight's Alley, three hours before every Army home game along Mills Road. Army football, more than just a game. On Saturday, the Army football team will open up the home portion of their schedule against San Diego State. Rich DeMarco now has a special look at legacy captain Steve Erzinger. Army senior linebacker Steve Erzinger truly is a leader among leaders. As the legacy captain of the Army football team, chosen by the 2010 senior class, Erzinger has added being a guiding voice to his already significant impact on the football field where he's Army's active career leader with 173 tackles. However, it's been quite an experience for the Houston native, who has been entrenched in Army's starting lineup since the beginning of his sophomore campaign. This same year, Rich Ellerson took over as head coach. It's been an exciting road. There's been a lot of ups and downs, obviously, with the freshman season, you know, being uh, my first season here at Army, but a lot of changes happened since then. Um, you know, been part of a sort of a, a building program, you know, from then on, and it, it's it's been just fun to be a part of, you know, with Coach Ellison and the staff. Um, you know, right now it's, it's it's finally at that that culmination year, I guess, your senior year. Uh, but you know, we're excited to have a good group of young guys that are that are wanting to play and, and really have a lot of talent. With new starters up and down the Army defense, Erzinger is developing a leadership style and says it's much different leading a young defense than a veteran one. You have to kind of establish a voice and, and, and establish how you're going to respond to certain things. With an older group of guys, you kind of know, uh, you know, hey, if they hit a long pass or, you know, we, we you know, fumble it or something like that, uh, we call it a frago when the offense fumbles or, or throws an interception. Uh, you know, we know how they're going to respond. We know what, what motivates them. With the young guys, it's kind of, you got to get a pry. you got to kind of figure it out really quick. And, and, and those impacts that those older guys had was obviously, it was key. Um, but it's, it's, it's a different challenge and, and fun to kind of understand what this new team's feeling like. Meanwhile, Army head coach Rich Ellerson says that in succeeding last year's legacy captain, Steven Anderson, Erzinger has taken on quite a bit of responsibility. Well, as I say, he plays a key role now. You know, he's always been the guy that was sort of um, uh, the stable, dependable, uh, 
guy that was was allowing uh, Steve or, uh, Steve Anderson to be that presence, that emotional presence, that voice in the center of the defense. You know, and and and, and, Steve, and Urs was the guy that was was managing the adjustments and managing all the technical stuff and the communication so Steve could be that emotional leader and obviously the productive football player that he was. Now we've we've spread him we're spreading Erzinger a little bit a little bit further. We're asking more from him. We're asking him to be that presence. Erzinger says that with his experience with this Army football team on and off the field, what he hopes to impress on his teammates is quite straightforward. I think it's just sort of building your comfort level within the system, uh, really understanding you know who goes where and, and, and what you know certain down distances mean, just overall football knowledge. And, and if you can do that and make the younger guys feel comfortable, then they're going to play better. Um, you know whether that translates to your direct success, uh, you know sometimes you hope it doesn't because they make all the plays. And if that's the case, that's that's fine by me. Spoken like a true leader, the team first style of Army senior legacy captain Steve Ersinger. For Black Knights Weekly, I'm Rich Demarco. Kickoff on Saturday from Mikey Stadium is at noon. We'll be back with the weekend preview after the short break. Join the Army A Club today and support cadet athletes 12 months a year. Members of the A Club receive priority consideration for parking, seat locations, pregame hospitality, as well as Army Navy tickets. But the benefits don't stop there. The A Club also gives members access to special receptions and events throughout the year. To join, visit the A-Club link at GoArmySports.com or call 845-938-2322. The Army A-Club, supporting cadet athletes. Gillis Fieldhouse will be rocking on Friday and Sunday as the Army Volleyball team will host the 4th Annual West Point Challenge. The Black Knights will take on NJIT, Arkansas, Dartmouth, and Marist. Head coach Alma Kavachi says her squad is still focusing on themselves. Excited about the challenges ahead. Again, we're focusing uh, each game at a time, one point at a time, one match at a time, to be able to prepare for the Patriot League. And this weekend is going to tell us more of where we are. Every day at each game and match we play, we're getting better. And that's why we as a coaching staff are very excited about this Army Volleyball 2011 team. That isn't the only tournament being held at West Point this weekend as the women's soccer team hosts the Army Soccer Classic. Army will take on VMI and Sacred Heart, while St. Bonaventure will also compete. Head coach Stephanie Golan says this tournament's format will help down the road. We're one game at a time, one weekend at a time, and you know, we have three weekends left to build before we hit Patriot League in, in October, and this one's an important one for us. You know, anytime you, you've got a Friday-Sunday matchup and you know, both games matter, that's what the Patriot League is, is about. You know, our double weekends, both, both of those games matter, so this is good preparation for that. On Friday, the cross-country teams will travel to Ithaca, New York for a triangular meet with Cornell and Binghamton. The first showdown between the Big Red and the Black Knights was a men's race back in 1935. Following last week's Army Open, head coach Troy Engel is excited to see his team compete this weekend. It was a good gauge of our fitness. We felt good about where we were. We feel good about the depth. I think what it didn't allow us to do is to see who, from those those groups will really be able to, to put the hammer down when they're called upon to compete against others. And we think this weekend is going to give us that kind of a chance to see that. The Army football team returns to West Point for their first home game of the season when they take on San Diego State. Head coach Rich Ellerson says his team will be prepared to take on this new challenge come Saturday. We have this this marvelous moment for a do-over. You know, we can we can decide, hey, did, what that felt like and what we want it to feel like, what how we're going to play, how we're going to stay in the moment, how we're going to uh, uh, get on the edge and play on the edge and, and feed off each other's energy and let's, let's be those gutty little black knights and, and give somebody a go. Rounding out the weekend, the men's soccer team will host Central Connecticut State Saturday night. Head coach Russell Payne expects another great test for his team. They're tough. They've got, uh, they've got some, some very uh, athletic guys in, in, in multiple positions, some guys with some very good playmakers. Um, they can be very effective on, on different kinds of restarts and you know, putting balls in the box. So, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. So that'll put a wrap on our second episode of Black Knights Weekly. For everyone here at ITT Night Vision, I'm Rick Johnston. We hope you enjoyed watching today's show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We'll see you next time.